Imagine yourself living on the hundredth floor. Unfortunately, I have to tell you that the elevator stops working. Well, you have two options to choose from. Number one, you can climb up a rope. Number two, you can climb up the stairs. Which decision are you going to make? Well, probably I'd say that most of you here are definitely going to choose to climb up the stairs, because that's normal. But you see, whenever I made my own decisions, what I always chose to do was to climb up a rope, to just jump over that barrier in front of me in, in an instant. Thank goodness I'm still alive. Yeah. So today, I'm going to talk about how climbing up the stairs was so important for me. So my story, it begins long, long ago, four years before. When I was a student in seventh grade, I began to code from scratch. Well, I mean, I did start from scratch, but here, I mean the orange cat that can move, spin, and even talk. And so, this cat, was amazing, so cool guy, and so I had a lot of fun with Scratch. And so Scratch was a satisfying start for me. But then I faced a problem. I started learning this computer language called C Sharp. Well, it was Python, by the way. Um, but after learning that, I realized that I didn't understand what the teacher was teaching me at all. I mean, at all, I didn't understand anything. You see, I, I was, or I am good at English right now, but back then when I was a little kid in South Korea, man, my English was so poor that I couldn't even write a simple essay in English. And spelling out functions was definitely a challenge, but what was more difficult for me was the notorious mole reference exception. Even if you're not into coding, I'd probably say that most of you here are not going to be saying that this is going to be my cup of tea. And so was I. I never thought I'll be passionate about something like that on the screen. And so, as you'd expect, coding class was boring for me. And all of a sudden, what I thought was this class was only for geniuses who needed a hobby. And so, after this moment, I didn't code for the next four years. Many things changed for me in the past four years. I moved here to Yantai, China, and I transferred to an international school here. I learned how to speak and write in English properly, and one day I happened to realize that, hey, I'm not bad at English anymore. At this point, I was a sophomore about to be a junior. During my second semester, I had to choose classes for my junior year. So important. And this was when a click changed my entire life. A mere click changed what I would be passionate about, what I would be living for. So I clicked for a class called Computer Language. Yes, the class that I thought was boring and only for geniuses. And so, I didn't expect the class to be entertaining at all. But after taking several lessons, I realized that I was understanding what the teacher was teaching me. And so naturally, I got interested in this computer language, C Sharp, and I decided to study ahead. And I was so interested in coding, that when my teacher was teaching me a race, I already knew how to make use of many generic data structures and how to take advantage of OOP and C sharp, like polymorphism. And for those who aren't into coding, this would be like a little kid who's so interested in coding that when his mother is reading Cinderella to him, he's asking his mother, Hey mom, what does the green light symbolize in the Great Gatsby? I was kidding here, but seriously, I was very interested in coin. And so I learned so much in my first semester, 
So I decided to make something with coding. Tetris was a very, very popular game among my peers and seniors. So I decided to make the game Tetris. And this time, I really had to start from scratch. Not our friendly orange cat anymore. I had totally no experience of making any types of games in my life, but I still had to make this game called Tetris. I was afraid. I had all these scary things in my mind, like, what if I can't do it? Or what if I was wrong with thinking that I was doing well with my computer language class? Facing a barrier with seemingly high standards, I realized that I had not started yet. One day, I decided to do something very small. I sat down on my chair, I faced my computer, and I typed out the things that it makes to make the game Tetris. First of all, I needed blocks, random blocks that would fall. And then second of all, what I needed was a frame in which all these blocks could stay in and accumulate on. And surprisingly, I realized, and you also realized, that these are the only essential components of the game Tetris. I felt very happy this time that I was actually able to do something. I didn't have to think of a load of scary things like what if this is just all a waste of my time. What changed my response to my fear was how I started. I started small. I sat down and I just jotted down my thoughts. And so, after a long, long journey, eventually I was able to make this game Tetris. So, I mean, the resolution is awful, but, you know, I eventually made this game Tetris. I made it, and again, I just started small, starting from the blocks, and then making them move, making a frame, making them stay in the frame, not to, you know, escape the frame, all of that. And then, all of them mixed together to create this game Tetris. And so, after making the game Tetris, making games, was much more easier for me. And so the first thing I did was a simple RPG game. So I had all the levels, all the attack styles, all the things that you know would be in a RPG game. And also, I have the awesome level up screen. That's always exciting for players. And more than an RPG game, I also made a snake game, which you can also easily find in Google. I thought I was ready for challenges now, so I started to learn the game engine Unity. You know the word. I started small again. Watching some tutorials, I made a very, very simple running game, and then what I did was I imitated this game called Spelunky 2. And again, you know the word. I started small. And so what I did was I started a sketch of how the map would look like. And you can see on the top that I have numbers. That was where I started. That simple. Okay, I started really small. Starting from numbers, I put all those numbers in a grid which you could see on the bottom. And I saw that I saw the possibility that I could actually do this. That I could actually apply the concept over there to the game engine and start small again. And so Eventually, I'm still imitating the game Spelunky 2, which I can't show you, unfortunately. But, so I, I was still able to do things, even though I started small. As you can see, I was a student who was afraid of coding. I mean, by chance. It was just by chance that I got to learn the computer language C Sharp. And the only thing I did was to start very small. Start very small. But now, I can make all these games I showed you, and I can even use the game engine you made. As I repeated before, what changed me was how I started. I started small. 
to recover from my repeated failures when I desperately needed. What I desperately needed was success. And starting small, you know, starting small provided me with successes. These successes helped me to cheer myself up. And these successes helped me to love and respect myself. I know that it's really hard to say, you can do it, cheer up, when you're facing a series of failures. I know what that feels like, and that's what I've been exactly showing you, what exactly I've been telling you. And so that's the reason I started small. I started small, but I still came up with these kind of things. Don't try to break an entire barrier in front of you. Instead, build your own stairs to go over that barrier. Every step, it doesn't have to be big. You can have as many stairs as you want, and you can climb them up on your own pace. So you know, stairs, not ropes, stairs was so important for my life. And it, it was important for me to have perseverance and courage at the moment. But I realized that it was also important to see things from a long-term perspective. If you build stairs that are too big for you, then you would soon give up. You would not grow your perseverance and courage. Because it's no different from having a large barrier. On the other hand, if you have stairs that are too small for you, then you would become lazy. I'm sure you would become lazy and you would not grow your perseverance and courage. So, Know yourself. Just as I tried to know what Tetris is, who I was as a person, how foolish I was, try to ask yourself who you are, what you have to do, what you love to do, what you're passionate about, who you want to be with, all these types of questions. It's okay not to have the answers. But after asking these questions to yourself, you'll realize that you can build your own stairs to go over that barrier. And you realize that you know yourself better. And I trust, and you'd be able to trust yourself, that you can go over your own barriers in front of you. Thank you.